<sighs> okay, I'm going to play March of the Drowned to bring back Admiral Beckett Brass and Stormfleet Sprinter to my hand, and then I'll bring them both back out onto the field for seven mana, and then I'll equip Beckett Brass with Lightning Greaves for Haste and Shroud. Go to attacks. It's card games and games, baby. Okay, this time, this time we've got some ground to cover. If there's one thing video game developers can't get enough of, it's packing in an entire other game into one they're already working on. And there's nothing, nothing more popular than building your own card game in the middle of your other, bigger game development project and finding an organic way to include it in the deadline. Pretty sure I've nailed quite a few people on this one. But before we can get into card games in games history and explore the breadth of its presence, we have to lay down some ground rules. Because according to my Twitter surveying, some of you don't know the difference between a card game and a card game. What is this? What is this? Batem Kaitos? Not a card game. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories? Not a card game. I'm not talking about card games. I'm talking about card games. Poker has its place in our world, but it's not the feature creeping, side quest obsessing, back of the box promotion a card game is. What I'm referring to is something closer to Magic the Gathering or the Pokemon trading card game. The kind of card game you pick up in chapter 2 of a turn based RPG and go around its world challenging other players to. But we're not talking about video game card games, which are digital counterparts to physical card games, nor video games which use card game mechanics as its core gameplay, but we'll get into those later. Don't worry, I have plans for them. Now for me what card games in games really means are those precious wonders of Sunday afternoons. The kind of day where it's too late to make significant story progress before work or school tomorrow, but not late enough to sit there and do nothing, and oh! How you so badly want to return to the land of never was and exist among its people in some way. But oh, you can. You can. Pull the deck of cards from your inventory, ask them if they partake in the ruler's game, and lay waste to their sorry ass deck. Bro, what kind of self-respecting individual runs a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one in their deck? Get out of here, kid. <clears throat> I, uh... I may have been part of the Yu-Gi-Oh community at some point. My therapist says progress isn't linear. When I say card games in games, I'm talking about mini games which change the way we view the setting we're already a part of. I'm talking about the grounded irony of high fantasy characters whipping out a deck of cards and sitting down at a table, regalia and all, to play a few games of cardboard. I'm talking about the only thing open world games haven't adopted and run into the ground yet. Card games. And the first card game in another game is... Wait, wait, you serious? Is it actually Triple Triad? I mean, it was certainly my first guess, but yeah. After doing some digging, Triple Triad, in fact, might be the first card game canonized and fleshed out in a video game. It also remains one of the best examples of what we're talking about here. If you're not familiar with Triple Triad, it's what we call a card capture game, and it makes its debut in Final Fantasy VIII. The rules are already fairly simple, but I'm trying not to be a Wikipedia page, so basically, Card go on board, card have number on sides. When two card touch, bigger number win, give card point to other player. When board full, game end, player with most points wins. I'm not going to explain the rules of Triple Triad because the rules of a card game aren't important. What matters is what this card game represents. Final Fantasy VIII isn't about Triple Triad, but Triple Triad is never absent from your adventure. Virtually every NPC in Final Fantasy VIII can be challenged to a game of Triple Triad. It's as common in VIII's world to play Triple Triad as it is to wake up every morning. They sell Triple Triad cards in stores. A Triple Triad card is a lovely gift to receive from an NPC in Final Fantasy VIII, and it's also played differently in various regions of the world. Regional variations on Triple Triad exist, with some challengers asking you to play with their region's rules, or combining both of your rule sets together for the match. Triple Triad's regional variations are a mechanical culture shock, an effective kick in the head to establish you aren't home anymore. They do things differently here, and you better respect it. 
A new town with new architecture and people who speak another language or have different clothing is a nice visual cue for a player, but how often are you asked to learn their customs? How often has a video game taken a familiar element and shown you a different side to it? When has it made you eager to discover different ways of interacting with another human being through it? Triple Triad is etiquette. Playing Triple Triad with someone else's rules is a form of respect and mixing your rule sets together is a cultural exchange between the two of you. Card games excel at this in ways you don't realize. It's the reason every Magic the Gathering commander group has their own specific set of house rules on top or in spite of the committee's ban list. It's why card games have so many formats. Card games are a middle ground between different kinds of people, people who might not even speak the same language or have the same social norms. Yet, they can communicate through the shared terms of the card game. They recognize what decks the other is playing. They take note of how they shuffle cards, or hold their hands, or organize their playing space. In a matter of minutes, and despite their distant backgrounds, two people can develop a connection through their shared interest. At the table, the differences setting us apart melt away until only the cards remain, and from there are slowly reintroduced through play. Cultural and language barriers turn into points of interest. The gaps between gameplay are short but sweet moments of learning about each other. Tiny, anecdotal conversations. Hey, how do you say I pass turn in your native language? I'm new here. Is the general rule of thumb to put your graveyard on the right side of the deck instead of above it? I'd like to play again next time I'm here. Do you have a Discord or something I can hit you up on? Card games are a social activity, and card games in games allow us to socialize with characters we meet in more meaningful ways. And once Triple Triad hit the stage, they took it and put it everywhere! Not. Shockingly enough, no one made the attempt to utilize the nugget of replay value Final Fantasy VIII had uncovered. There was no gold rush of card game minigames to find every which way you looked. Not even Square Enix capitalized on their own idea. Instead, they created Tetra Master for Final Fantasy IX, which isn't as complicated as you might think, but boy oh boy is it confusing. No, instead the card game in-game's niche developed sporadically across the decades. Once in a while, you'd find a Triple Triad clone sandwiched inside a programmer's digital crawl space, or play a very weird take on turning Blackjack into a competitive card game. Knights of the Old Republic featured Pazak, where players used their decks to fudge a number as close as they could to 20 without going over. Versions of these two ideas, Triple Triad and Pazak, sort of permeate all over the history of video games. The latter pales in comparison in terms of visibility and success, but if there is a Triple Triad tier version of Pazak, it's gotta be Fallout New Vegas' Caravan. Again, rules aren't important, so two players, each with three stacks of cards. Like Blackjack, get your stacks higher than theirs, but between 21 and 26. Each stack is a separate win-lose, player with the most stacks won wins the whole game. Like Triple Triad, Caravan can be played with many different NPCs in the Mojave Wasteland, but more importantly, Caravan proves a card-based minigame doesn't need to be complex, use specialized proprietary cards, or have completely original card designs. It uses classic playing cards, with the exception of making different brands of those playing cards a loophole for using duplicates of the same card value. It further illustrates the rules, style, and way to win any in-game card game are irrelevant compared to the interactions it allows you to have with the world it's in. The sudden realization you and the person you're speaking to are both caravan players is a small oasis in the harsh wasteland you both live in, and this simple card game is a reprieve from the dangers you both face every day. Caravan is a shared paradise, a distraction you can focus on and forget about your troubles with, even if it's for a short time. The escapism card games provide is so deeply comforting to those of us who play them on a regular basis. We begin to sorely miss it when we're unable to return to the table for long periods of time. Going out to a card shop or any mutual hangout spot and sitting down with a group of friends to play cards is one of the most viscerally thought-depriving activities you can ever experience in the best way. Once again, Everything melts away until only the cards remain. Your next play is your only responsibility. Thinking about your next turn is the singular, immediate thought. Your cards and the person across the table are the objects of your focus. 
and for the duration of your match, you don't have to worry about what you'll have to do when you get home. It's this soothing bubble from which nothing gets in or out. When you're ready to leave, you feel renewed, you feel satisfied, emotionally full from a hopefully positive social interaction and an extended amount of genuine relaxation. Granted, your opponents in Caravan are fewer and farther between than they are in Triple Triad, and it's easy to abuse because the dev team for New Vegas, unfortunately, had to make it a low priority given other systems and features needing more TLC. But at its core, New Vegas is about survival. It's about deciding for yourself what to make of your life and betting against impossible odds to live. To take advantage of others is a choice left to you. To stack the deck in your favor and win back the caps you just spent on a merchant's inventory is your gamble to make. This too is a form of etiquette in different contexts. A different kind of social contract where you can just as easily swindle someone who may or may not deserve it but appropriate for the kind of world it exists in. Despite its mechanical shortcomings, Caravan still excellently serves Fallout New Vegas. Once you understand what makes card games in games work, it's easy to identify the titans of the group. Gwent from The Witcher 3 is an obvious one and way too complicated for me to explain even in short. Just go look at the wiki. But Gwent became so popular and was so in depth, it eventually was released as a standalone game with online multiplayer and received several expansions. At some point, Gwent outgrew the confines of the world it was designed to exist in and followed the lead of real life trading card games in becoming standalone digital versions of their original counterparts. And this, unfortunately, is the most common permeation of card games in games. The video game card game, a simulation in a vacuum. The Chess Master 9000 of card games. Fantastic in their own right, but they're for a totally different purpose. A different kind of existence for clerical, practical reasons and less to recreate the wonderful human qualities you'd find in our previous examples. Ironically, these video game card games are either single player or prohibit extensive communication with your opponents. Try to have a conversation with the other player in Magic Arena. Just try it. You can't. It's the opposite of what card games are meant to do. Inspire social interaction. And this seems silly, but my dream Friday Night Magic is sitting with my friends at a big table playing a four-way commander match and just shooting the shit while we play cards. Talking to each other as we take the more rudimentary actions no one needs to explain. I don't get this from digital card games. For this reason, I also separate card-based video games like Baton Kaidos and Chain of Memories from what I'm referring to when I say card games in games. Those titles aren't using their card game mechanics for the purpose of interpersonal communication. They're motivated by other goals and excel at them, but it puts them down a different path. But there are some exceptions to my rule set here. They're titles who want to express the nature of card games in games and center an entire experience around it. And those are adventure RPGs about card games. The Pokemon trading card game RPG, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Duel Academy, and even the Duel Masters RPG on Game Boy Advance are all solid examples of what I'm talking about. You build your own deck out of cards you win off other players or with the prize money you earn. You roam the town you live in with your friends and stumble into story beats punctuated by tense card battles. There's secrets to uncover, hidden bosses to fight, and special dialogue depending on how well you play. Though these are all explicitly an excuse to play their respective trading card games by yourself, they are spiritually identical to the card game in a video game which started it all. If you took the turn-based combat out of Final Fantasy VIII and made Triple Triad its central component, these RPGs are what you would get. Adventures to new places, with new people to meet, to play against. The card game elements of adventure RPGs about card games are parallel to card game minigames we hold in high regard. And at least one of them came out before or around the same time as Final Fantasy VIII, but it was still trying to do what Triple Triad was doing. Recreating the true joy of playing a card game with another human being, giving players a chance to experience it for themselves, and using it to make their worlds come alive. So the next time I ask the question, what are some card games in games you enjoy? Remember, I'm not asking about digital card games. I'm not asking about games with card-based mechanics. I'm not asking about card games. 
I'm asking about card games.